Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian District Mathematical Olympiad for 12th graders, 2024, problem number 1. We wish to find all positive integers m for which the equation x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0 has exactly one solution in the ring of integers zm. So not in integers, but we are solving this equation in the ring of integers zm. Exactly one solution. Here are my hints for this problem. First, consider case where m equals 1, trivial case. Now, consider separately cases when m is even or odd. If m is even, show that, well, then this should be the case and show that this has no solutions. Uh, if m is odd, then we can safely multiply our congruence because notice that our equation can be written in terms of a congruence, we wish to find only one solution modulo m, and notice that we can safely multiply on both sides by 4, so since 4 is co-prime to m, and we can to show, try to reduce our congruence to this congruence. Now, consider that 11 squared cannot divide m, and finally, by the Chinese remainder theorem, uh, our congruence has exactly one solution, modulo m, of course, if and only if this congruence, modulo p to the power of alpha, has exactly one solution for any p to the power of alpha which divides exactly m, where p is a prime and, of course, alpha is a positive integer. So give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. All right. So let's start. Uh, so maybe let's write it as uh, maybe let's write this preliminary preliminary note that x squared minus three x plus five equals zero has exactly one solution. In Z M, if and only if. If and only if the congruence x squared minus 3x plus 5 congruent to 0 modulo m has exactly one solution. Exactly one solution modulo m. Pretty basic fact. And now I wish to consider first what happens if, we, if m equals 1. If m equals 1, then really we have this congruence. Uh, well, we have only one number. Z1 uh, has only one element, namely 0. And of course, 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 5 equals 0 in Z1 because everything is zero in this ring. All right, now let's tackle the case when m is even. If m is even, then a fortiori, we will have x squared minus 3x plus 5 should be congruent to zero modulo 2. But notice the following. Notice that 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 5 is congruent to 1 and is not congruent to 0, modulo 2, and 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 5 is also congruent to 1 and not to 0, modulo 2. So we have no solutions. No solutions. All right, so now, now, if m is odd, then the following are equivalent. Then the following conditions are equivalent. We can take our congruence.
we can take our congruence and now since m is odd we can safely multiply on both sides by or and this is equivalent all right and now let's do the following trick here we have 2x squared minus 2 2x times 3 plus 3 squared so i have introduced 9 so I have to subtract 11 from both sides. All right. And now on the left hand side, we have 2x minus 3 squared congruent to minus 11 modulo m. And now I wish to consider two cases, a few cases. First, if m equals 11, if m equals 11, then notice that uh, it should be true that 2x minus 3 squared is congruent to 0 modulo 11, which is, of course, since 11 is a prime, this only means that 2x minus 3 itself is congruent to 11. So we have 2x is congruent to 3, but 3 is congruent to 14 modulo 11 now we can safely divide by 2 and we get x is congruent to 7 modulo 11 indeed we have exactly one solution we have exactly one solution all right it's good news now can 11 with any higher power divide our m Notice that if 11 squared divides m, then, what then? Then it should be true, a fortiori once again, 2x minus 3 should be congruent to minus 11 modulo 11 squared. But notice that that means that mm. 11 or maybe, yes, this should be the case. So this means that 11 must divide to x minus 3 squared. And since, since 11 is a prime, this in turn means that 11 must divide to x minus 3. But this in turn means that 11 squared must divide to x minus 3 squared. And now we have a problem, because since this divisibility is true, then this congruence really says that 0 is congruent to minus 11 modulo 11 squared, which is a contradiction. Contradiction. No solutions. All right. All right. Now, suppose something else. Suppose now. Suppose now the general case that M is of the form 11 to the power of uh, epsilon times P1 alpha 1 p2 alpha 2 and so on p k alpha k where of course epsilon is either 0 or 1 it cannot be any higher as we know it p1 p2 pk is e, they are primes but they are not 2 and they are not 11 and these numbers alpha 1, alpha 2, and so on, alpha k are positive integers. And now let's also suppose that there is at least one such prime. So k is also a positive integer. I will show that, well, we have two cases really. Let's take our congruence once again. 2x minus 3 squared should be congruent to minus 11 modulo m. We have two cases. 
If minus 11 is not a quadratic residue mod modulo m, then we have no solutions. If m is, if, if minus 11 is a quadratic non-residue, quadratic non-residue modulo m, then we have no solutions. Then we have no solutions. So now suppose, suppose now, let's now suppose that minus 11 is a quadratic residue. So minus 11 is congruent to a squared modulo m, where a is some element, some integer. Now, notice the following. Our congruence can be rewritten as 2x minus 3 squared is congruent to a squared modulo m. So after uh, putting everything on one side, we have 2x minus 3 minus a, 2x minus 3 plus a, should be congruent to zero modulo m. Now, it's time to use the Chinese remainder theorem. By the Chinese remainder theorem, by the Chinese remainder theorem, uh, 2x minus 3 minus a, 2x minus 3 plus a congruent to 0 modulo m has exactly one solution. If and only if, if and only if uh, the same congruence 2x minus 3 minus a to x minus 3 plus a congruent to 0 modulo p e j to the power alpha j has exactly one solution. Where j is any integer from 1 to k. Uh, you may ask, what about, what about mm, 11 to the power epsilon, where 11 to the power epsilon was already considered, has been already considered. It has one solution, so it's sufficient to check this case. But now I will show that, in fact, this has two, at least two solutions, because notice that, uh, well, first of all, notice Notice that uh, 2x minus 3 minus a and 2x minus 3 plus a cannot be divisible, cannot be divisible by, uh, by p, j at the same time. Why is that? Proof of this claim is very simple, because notice that if pj divides 2x minus 3 minus a and pj divides 2x minus 3 plus a, then that would mean that pj must divide the difference of these numbers, so it divides 2a. Remember that pj is odd, so pj must divide a. All right, but this means that pj p j must divide also a squared, and remember, remember that a squared is congruent to minus 11 modulo pj. a squared is congruent to minus 11 modulo pj. So pj must divide 11, which is impossible because we are supposing that pj is neither 2 
nor 11. Contradiction. Notice now that, let's go back to this congruence right here. Let's copy it. And now notice that since these two numbers are not at the same time divisible by pj, then this congruence has two solutions. Either the first parenthesis is congruent to zero, modulo p j alpha j, or the second parenthesis is congruent to zero, modulo p j with power alpha j. All right, and now let's solve this congruence. Well, x is congruent to 2 inverse. You may ask, what is 2 inverse? Where, well, since 2 is co-prime to pj, 2 is invertible in the ring z pj to the power alpha j. So it's legal to write it like that. Or x is congruent to 2 inverse. Mm. 3 minus a modulo p j to the power alpha j. All right, so clearly we have two different solutions. They are different because they are not congruent to zero. Uh, they are not congruent uh, modulo p j, so they have to be different. We have two different solutions. modulo pj to the power alpha j, which means that our original congruence has also at least two solutions, not only one. So this also does not satisfy our conditions. So all in all, going back, let's analyze everything once again. m equals 1 was good. Uh, any even odd, any even m was not good. When m is odd, 11 was good. Well, if 11 squared divides m, no good right here. And if we have any other factor, prime factor, which is not 11, then we have two or more solutions. So all in all, we have only two solutions, 1 and 11. So let's write our answer and let's finish this problem. So x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals zero has exactly one solution. Exactly one. One solution x in the ring Zm if and only if if and only if m is either one or eleven. And this really closes our problem. Pretty nice problem. Rather standard, but yeah, rather nice, I'd say. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.